Howdy, Shumai. Konnichiwa. It's Eli here with episode four of Alba Salix season two. And I just want to take a moment to tell you that Sean and I will be in Seattle for PodCon 2 in January. It's a weekend of live shows and panels and performances for people who love uh, and or make podcasts. We were at the first one last year, and let me tell you, it's an amazing time getting to meet the people who write and produce and act in so many of our favorite shows. There's a big audio drama and like live play RPG presence there. And this time around, we're going to have a booth. So come and say hello, get some cool swag, meet fellow fans. It's going to be an excellent time. PodCon happens this January 19th and 20th in Seattle, Washington, and we hope you can join us. For all the details, check out podcon.com. And now it is time for Alba Salix Royal Physician Volume 2, Episode 4. Enjoy. Oh, Paravel, you're still up. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you reading, dear? Oh, just a few books on prenatal care. Superfoods for your unborn baby. <laughs> uh, raising the magical child. <laughs> are we having the magical child? Oh, they're all magical, aren't they? I just want to give the baby a good head start in life. <laughs> I don't think we can afford to bring in musicians to play for you around the clock again. Oh, no. Nothing like that this time. Not after little Wilhelmina decided to smash her violin on her violin teacher. One hundred and one spells for mothers to be. Isn't it a bit risky to do magic while you're expecting? Oh, no. These are all minor charms. Completely harmless. Ah, I see. Completely useless. Well, good night, dearest. Don't stay up too late. I won't. Night, darling. Useless. To the library it is. Ahem. <clears throat> By appointment to the king and queen, Alba Salix, Royal Physician, Volume 2. <laughs> Episode the fourth, Harvest Moon. For the last time, Magnus, you may not play with knives at the reception desk. I wasn't playing with it. I was showing it to our patients. They were totally interested. They were being polite to the person with the knife. I think the safety risk is quite evident. What about my safety? We got held up by bandits last week. What if you turn your back and a child takes it? (sighs) I know three easy ways to disarm an opponent with a knife. Two of them are non-lethal? No knives, Magnus. Happy Harvest Moon, everyone. What are these? Flower garlands to wear to the Harvest Moon Fair tonight. You're all going, right? (laughs) Aw, come on. There's going to be drinking and dancing and music and pretty lanterns. So, can I have my knife back? No. No. Costumes and cotton candy and jugglers and plays? I'll have to check my calendar. I've got another round of resumes to look through for the new hospital we're setting up in Paradox. You should give yourselves at least one night off. Balancing life and work is important. Right, Miss Piercy? Uh, night off is fine, of course. Whether or not you spend it at the fair is up to you. Alba's going to go. Right, Alba? I thought you'd have some special fairy ritual to enact for the full moon. Eh, that's not happening this year. I've been kind of uninvited, but that means I can spend more time with all of you. What do you say? Oh, fine. Yeah, I guess. Miss Piercy? Come on, it's a perfect chance for us to bond as a team. Yes, bonding as a team. Yay! This is going to be the best Harvest Moon ever! Ooh, jackpot! So, Julia, when you have a moment, Uh perhaps all these lovely priceless tomes could find a better place to live than the checkout desk? In a minute. Hey, Amanda, I found a chapter in Sarvik's Historias about Balgamari and Yeti. Check this out. 
They're green. And only three feet high. Oh, it sounds like they're a matriarchal society. Small green ladies in charge. I'm a fan. The best part, the Yatani, as they call themselves, are famous for their gin made of a rare juniper bush, which only grows in the ice caves of the frozen sea. I already want some. And they mix it with ice wine, birch syrup, and vodka to make something called a green flame. Wait, does that mean you light it on fire? You totally light it on fire. <gasps> yes. Do you think the palace kitchens have Yatani gin? Not anymore. I may have already stopped by the kitchens on my way into work. Yes. I want mine with extra flame. You there, librarians. Oh, your majesty. Hi. Royal librarians at your service. Are you drinking on the job? Uh, nope. Not not yet. We are compiling the first comprehensive ethnographic study of drinking cultures in Farloria and the I neighboring... don't know why I asked. I sent a page down yesterday to retrieve a book. Uh, yes, sorry, your majesty. Uh, so you were after the six books De Rerum Spiritus of Sundvik, tome two? That is the one. I think that one's in our rare documents collection. So can I get your majesty a uh, drink? Uh, of, of water, I mean, or coffee? I am fine. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I show three copies. One's at our sister branch in Fair upon Middling. The second one... Does your majesty read Viaxin? Excuse me? Uh, it's the original edition written in demonic script. Huh. And the third copy? Yeah, the third one's a more recent translation, but it's out on loan since... Oh... Ooh, wow. Who loaned out a book from Rare Documents? Uh, it says it was checked out by Mr. Crankle. Dr. Crankle? That's the one. He's been banished from the kingdom. Someone's going to be owing a lot of late fees. <clears throat> I require a copy of this book. A uh, demonic script? That I can read. I'll put in a request, but it's going to be about a week and a half. What about secondary sources, Julia? Secondary sources? Yeah, uh, there may be some useful references to it in other books. Uh, try Benegy's Compendium? Yep, on it. I didn't realize you were so interested in ancient magic, your majesty. Just curious. Uh, okay, I think I found a reference. It's by Fractasius. Oh, right, good old Fractasius the Dark. See, Fractasius apparently wrote a play based on the books that Rerum Spiritus. A play? What use is that? Uh, the Ambassador of Doom. It's said to actually contain key passages from the books. I see. Ooh, it looks like it was even banned once back in King Lothar's time. I'm guessing that was after the disaster at the Granville Opry. Oh, when it burned down? Well, supposedly the fire was just a cover-up for what really happened. Uh-oh. On opening night, the lead actress suddenly transformed into a demonic beast of unparalleled power that killed dozens before being subdued by the town guard. Whoa. Unparalleled power, you say? She leapt into the front row and devoured the patrons' faces. No! I will have this play. See, this is why no one likes audience participation. I know, right? Huh. There's no publishing date, but I, I think this might be the first printing. Yes. I will have it now, please. Oh, uh, sure. Was there anything else, Your Majesty? <gasps> Unbelievable. Cranky. I wonder why she wanted that book anyway. Eh, it's royalty. Who knows why they do anything? So, drinks? Hell yes. Ooh, even the flames are green. Nice. Cheers. Cheers. Someone's all grumpy pants. I am not grumpy. No, you're grumpy pants. That's worse. We could just stay in. Have a nice dinner and a... Relaxing bath. We can do that any old night. It's our anniversary. Which anniversary? Of the night we first met. We met at an office party the night of the Harvest Moon Fair. Exactly. The Harvest Moon is on a different date every year. It's not the date. It's the occasion, silly. Let's go dance and watch fireworks and eat fried pumpkin on a stick. Come on, grumpy pants. I am not grumpy pants. Can you say that again with a little bit more of a pout? I just... What if one of those miserable wizards from the OSG sees us together? Tally. Who cares what they think? We're fighting to get them to abide by proper workplace guidelines. And here I am seeing you. And? I'm your superior. <laughs> Debatable. Rude. You know what I mean. 
I don't want to set a bad example. You do realize this is the one night of the year you don't have to worry about being recognized. What do you mean? There's this little thing called a masquerade. That's true, but where are we going to get... Ah? Uh... Masks. Why do you have all these masquerade masks? Thank you, Loria. They're so beautiful. You're a genius. They are quite pretty. Yeah, they are. I picked this one for you. I've never worn one of these before. Oh, that looks super adorable. Yes, a thousand times yes. All right. What about you? <sighs> well, I like this lacy blue one, but there's also this silvery one with the little ears. What do you think? That one. The blue? Mm, I think you should definitely wear that one. Done. What? Do we really have to go out tonight? <sighs> Come on, you. Let's get dressed. Dubia nectar. Fresh squeezed dubia nectar. Sarah, yes. I'll, I'll have one of those. You betcha. Uh, that'll be six pence. Okay. Well, that, that's a lot. Fresh dubia fruit's hard to come by in these parts. But it's the most healthful drink you'll drink all night, my friend. <laughs> You're not wrong about that. Have a great fair. Uh, good evening, friend. Can I get you a nice cup of Duvian nectar? What's in it? Only 100% fresh squeezed Duvia fruit direct from the pointy land. An excellent source of Duviatic acid, which has been shown to aid in pancreatic function. And a happy pancreas makes for a happy stomach. That'll be sixpence, my friend. Oh, no. You're busted, sucker. Busted? What? Why? House of Healing Hygiene Enforcement Squad. With Roli, you are charged with selling drinks without a license. Uh, it's right here. Say, aren't you that kid that works for Alba? Matthias? Magnus. And I'm 18, by the way, and certified by the Ministry of Magical Affairs and Health. By the way. Certified to do what? Certified to take you downtown, buddy. All right. Fine. Your so-called license looks legit. But what about this health drink of yours? Duviatic acid's a real thing. Ask Alba. There's even evidence it may boost the immune system. But I don't tell my customers that because there's only been the one study so far. Well, aren't you a paragon of scientific rigor? Don Tootin? If I lie, Alba will wire my mouth shut. Hm. Do you reuse these cups? Sterilized after every use with a purissimus spell. Dang it. Fine. But how do we know this fruit isn't contaminated with deadly... fig fungus? Fig fungus? It's spreading all over the pointy lands. One little spore can paralyze you from head to toe. Look, can I get on with selling my wares now? Go ahead. But I'll be watching you, buddy. Knock yourself out. Dubia nectar! Six pence a glass! And these two souls, once so in love, do murder one another for the sake of money, greed, and power. You shall see next Friday upon this stage at half past eight. Alba? Down here. Hey, watch the wings! Sorry. Did I miss the previews? Yes, he just finished. Why do they always have to give away the entire story? And now, my friends, be much afeared. Our main event at last is here. The tragic history of Baron Bolgu. Brought to you by the Guild of Knife Sharpers. Oh there, good Master Martin. Oh there, Cook. Have you the evening repast prepared? Tis underway, tis underway. You must work fast. The repast is well past time. I blame these blasted blades. Aye, these are in truly atrocious state, good cook. No good to chop and chop these. Looks like there's going to be a murder. Oh no, how can you tell? Well, they're doing an ad for the Knife Sharpener's Guild. They always sponsor the true crime ones. Oh, you're right. I never noticed that. Well, at least it's better than the love stories where they're all ads for mattresses. I don't know if I want to see a murdery play. The Count is in a rare mood. How rare? Bloody? A bloody rare mood indeed. Oh, hey, Alba, is that you? Damn, I 
Matt. Hello, Jerome. Holly, nice to see you too. Uh, mind if I sit here? Well, so much for enjoying the show. Let him rant and rail, and perhaps he shall shout himself hoarse. Or myself deaf. And bring you peace either way. I sooner would keep my ears. <laughs> the Count must have food. Well, then, quick, hire you to the sharpener's shop, and he'll shortly shave and shake these shivs sharp as shark's teeth. I surely shall. <laughs> Mind you, good Master Martin, forget not your purse, lest you return transfixed with our best blade twixt your ribs. But it's never sharp to short the sharp. Did I miss anything? Alba says there's going to be a murder. Really? How can you tell? Oh, I just have this feeling. Oh, that reminds me. I've been having a feeling, too. <laughs> kind of an itching. I tried that salve you ladies gave me the other week, but uh, it's been getting worse all day. How about we watch the first act? Oh, okay. I can wait. Alba, what? It's going to be dark soon. Don't you think we should, you know, get your room to somewhere safer? We just got here. The moon's going to rise, and then, you know... I know. Maybe we should tell him that he's a... He does not need another excuse to pester me for more cures. Besides, he's perfectly nice when he's... affected. You mean when he's a werewolf? Not so loud! Okay, just the first act. That's all I ask. We can go at the intermission. But at intermission! Oh. Now hush! Who's there? My ears yet ring. Methought I heard a voice from in the hearth. Hail and well met. What? Oh, look. Who art thou? Isn't that the guy who played Count Bozzanio last spring? Oh, I missed that show. Oh, I love his outfit. Can you both be quiet for one single minute? Hey, what about the Griffin and Bucket? That wasn't our first date. You tricked me. It still counts. You said it was a departmental planning session. It worked. I seem to remember it worked about five more times after that. <laughs> Maybe. But no. Our first official mutually agreed upon date was May 12th. Remind me? 7 p.m. G closer to 7.15. I believe you. What happened? Dinner. Dancing. Ice cream. Oh, the ice cream. Yes. Wow, so that's your idea of a first date? Well... Damn, you're pretty forward, aren't you? Minx. Hussy. <laughs> oh, hi, Gloria. Is that you? Oh, no. Hi! Yes? It's me, Holly, from the House of Healing. Of course! How are you? I'm good. Gosh, what a pretty mask. I almost didn't recognize you. Who's your friend? Uh, I'm Tally. Hi, Tally. You both look super cute. Thanks. You having a good fair? It's so neat. All the candy and ribbons. Oh, but I almost forgot. Have you seen a dog running around? What kind of dog? About this big. Kind of unusual looking. He's got a short muzzle, strangely wide at the shoulders. His name's Toby. I haven't seen anything bigger than a beagle. Yeah, me neither. Sorry, Holly. We'll keep an eye out. Thanks. Nice seeing you. Toby, come here, buddy. That was a close one. Do you think she's suspected? Oh, for heaven's sake. I'm serious. Are you going to let that ruin your night? You are, aren't you? I knew this was a bad idea. Look, if it's going to be like this every time we go out together, I think you'd better let me go. Let you... <laughs> You've basically replaced me with that talking rock. Leon isn't a replacement. A rock can't do filing or run errands. Well, I'm glad I can provide such valuable assistance. That's not what I mean. This secret office romance bit has been exciting and everything, but I think we'd better call it off. Gloria. The office part, you goof, not the romance. Oh, thank God. I bet I can get a transfer to the planning office. I'd be two floors up, keep an eye on His Majesty's latest crazy ideas. Tally, I'm not leaving you. Just your job? Just my job. Why do you think I took it in the first place? <laughs> what, to be near me? <laughs> what can I say? I'm very goal-driven in my career. <laughs> Come here. So, if we're not working together, what are we going to do for excitement? Hmm. We'll have to think of something. 
Well, come dance with me. Let's see if it sparks any ideas. <laughs> And that seven, eight, nine is one shilling, plus five more is your change. Eh, thanks. You have yourself a great evening, my friend. You keep giving them the right change. I keep telling you, there is no scam. Yeah, right. The way Alba tells it, you're always up to something. Get your fresh squeeze, doobie on nectar. So, like, what was your favorite? Favorite what? Your favorite hustle. Your favorite... Scheme. Will you stop it? You can tell me. I used to be an outlaw myself. Come on. Even just a straight up con with no magic. Hey there, miss. Would you care for a refreshing cup of... Kid, you're scaring away my customers. Tell me about one con and I'll leave you alone. I don't want to talk about this. What's that? Duvier fruit can carry deadly fig fungus? Oh, kid, for cross sake. I hear one bite of a contaminated fruit will stop your heart. All right, all right. Okay, when Alba and I were at Hazelbrook, we used to go to this cafe near the campus called the Crotchety Crow. And every day... Magnus, there you are. No, I'm not. Y what? I, I was just helping Withrow. Is that so wrong? Uh, hi, Alba. Withrow. It's so good to see you. Yep. Magnus, I need your help. Toby's on the loose. Whoa, really? As in Jerome Toby? Yes, we have to find him. Holly's trying to spot him from the air. Uh, who's Toby? He's a, it's a stray dog. You mean a werewolf? What gave you that idea? Oh, full moon, howling and screaming in the distance. Oh yeah, look, there's a full moon tonight. What are the odds? How do you think they're having a festival? I see him. Alba, he's coming this way. I think he's following your scent. Oh, let's hope so. Toby, come here, boy. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's enough. And no, no kisses. Uh, uh -huh. Does anybody have a collar? We should be fine. He'll follow Alba just about anywhere as long as he doesn't get distracted. All right, all right Toby. <laughs> Cut it out. Alba, do you want a hand? I'm fine. Come on, let me help you up. Withrow, stop. Get back away, please. He can be a bit jealous. He's wagging his tail. What's up, buddy? Why don't you move over and let Alba... <laughs> ah! 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 Whoa! Buddy! I swear, Wolf! Toby! Withrow, I told you to back away! So, I'll just look after the stall, okay? Okay! Do be our nectar! Three pennies a glass! After that. <laughs> Glad you came to the fair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Gloria, look out. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah. Looks like they found their lost dog. It's okay. He won't hurt you. Toby, over here. Look out, everybody. It's a werewolf. <laughs> Thanks, Withrow. That was really helpful. That was a werewolf? <sighs> I'm going to have to write this up. Wow. Everybody stay back! Withrow, you can move away slowly. Withrow? Puppy! Uh, someone needs to deal with that dog. We are dealing with him. It's not a dog. It's a werewolf. I got this. No! Yeah, you get him, Biff! Alba, where are you? Oh, yeah. Everybody, keep steady. We got him cornered. Yeah. I'm going to put this dog down. Uh-uh, no you don't. What she said. Get out of the way. Stop. Weapons down, all of you. Move it, ladies. I don't want to have to hurt you. You back off, buddy. Are you threatening a minister of the crown, sir? <laughs> what, you? Yes. And Talia Piercy, Minister of Magical Affairs and Health. Oh. Oh my gosh. Hi, Miss Piercy. Yes, hello, Holly. Well, la dee da <laughs> Sir, put your sword away. If you're the minister of magical whatever, why aren't you dealing with this animal, huh? The situation is under control. It is under control, isn't it? Totally. Alba's on her way. She better be. One of our specialists will be here at any moment. Good for you. Yeah, that monster could hurt people. He is people. He's a person, like you and me. Yeah. 
Even if he does steal the occasional sandwich and pee on things he shouldn't, he's never hurt anyone. Clear off, fairy. Ow! Hey! Holly, be careful. Come on, little wolfie. Sir, I won't ask you again. Put the sword away. This thing could kill everybody. It's a monster. He's not a monster. (laughs) Says you. What the hell are you? I'm the queen of the wind, buster! Well, 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 why don't you just blow away? There! Anybody else? Nope. Uh, I think I'm good. Get out of the way. Toby! Hi, Elba. Miss Salix, thank heavens. Good boy. Come here. Is everything all right? Holly, I, uh, there's a guy with a sword and I kind of stopped him. (laughs) Holly? As you were. Thank you, everyone. Please, go back to enjoying the fair. The minister commands you to go have fun. Miss Salix, did you know about this individual's condition? Is he a patient of yours? What's that, Toby? Time for a war? (laughs) Miss Salix. Sorry, it's so loud here. Let's talk some other time. Come on, Holly. I'm okay. (laughs) Well... How's that for excitement? His Majesty owes me a raise. Mm Mm-hmm. Dinner? Yes, please. There you are. Sorry I'm late. There was a situation. The moon is almost at its zenith. Did you bring the device? Um, as I said... There was a tiny bit of an incident, and uh, somebody stole it. What? I got chased around. There was a whole thing with a werewolf. Why weren't you keeping out of sight tonight? Hey, a guy's got to make a living somehow. Did you see who took it? No. I must have dropped it when I was being chased. You fool. I should have known better than to hire you. Well, you wanted to summon a demon. Can the ritual be done without the device? It's dangerous. I I wouldn't want to try it. What? (gasps) Hello. Uh, Magnus, Uh, what the... Hey, Withrow. How's it going? Uh, What are you doing here? Just getting some fresh air. Anyway, Withrow, dude, while you were running for your life, I noticed you dropped a little something on the ground. Uh, uh, Do you have it? Say, who's your scary friend? None of your business, boy. Fair enough. Nice cloak. Anyway, so here's this little doodad. Huh, thanks, kid. Y- you're saving my... Ah, ah, ah. Not so fast. Be careful with that. Now, my best guess is this is some kind of deflector, like for detecting and dispelling magical barriers, as you would if, you know, you were summoning a demon from another plane. Just hand it over. I've been reading up, man. I know things. If you two are quite finished. Do I know you from somewhere? No. I totally do. Stay away from me. <laughs> uh, come on. Uh, never mind her. Uh, give me the... Oh, whoa. It's... You're... Yes, I am. You're the queen. You're the actual Mother Goosey queen. What the heck is going on? You will address me properly. Right, right. Your, your majesty, what are you two up to? Right now... We are about to deal with a stupid boy who has found out too much. Mr. Lee, kill him. Ho-ho! I'd like to see you try. Ha! (laughs) Look, kid, I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this, but... Yeah? Whoa! Oblivious Annie! Dude, that spell was sweet. Alba never shows me anything. Cool. Good morning, Jerome. Oh, morning, Alba. Hi, Holly. You should get some rest, Jerome. You had a busy night last night. I did? What was last night? The Harvest Moon Fair? It was? How come I don't remember it? Oh, darn it. I was looking forward to it. I always seem to miss it for some reason. Jerome, we have some important news to tell you. Okay. The first thing is, you should read this brochure I made. Where it's at. Is that spelled right? Read it. Read it. (laughs) <laughs> Where it's at. A guide for new and newly discovered... <gasps> oh, is this for real? 
I'm a... I'm afraid so. Oh, well, this explains so much. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Magnus. Did you have fun at the fair last night? The fair? Like the Harvest Moon Fair? Yes. Was last night? Yes. You sure? Pretty sure. Jerome turned into a werewolf and everything. Oh, man. That would have been cool to see. How come I don't remember any of it? I don't remember anything either, Magnus. Are you a werewolf? Am I? <laughs> Maybe. Here, oh, read this list of symptoms. Magnus is not a werewolf. Yeah? You don't know. Catch. What's this? A bottle made of silver. Uh, You're not a werewolf, Magnus. Uh, but last night... It was the harvest moon. Half the town can't remember what they did last night. Well, I'm sure I did something awesome. Dang it. That would be so cool. Hey, Jerome, do you think you could... Huh? You know, just a little bite right here on the arm. You want me to bite you? No, Jerome, no biting. Magnus, get to work. You never let me have any fun. In Harvest Moon, Alba Salix, Volume 2, Episode 4, you heard Barbara Clifford as Alba Salix, Julian Sark as Magnus, Olivia John as Holly, and Elaine O'Neill as Antalia Piercy, with Mbula Enabong as Loria Berenice, Robert Francis as Jerome, Abbas Hussein as Withrow Lee, George Burtwell as King Gunther, and Marisa King as Queen Parabel. And special guests, Royal Librarians Amanda McLaughlin and Julia Shafini, hosts of the podcast Spirits, the prologue was read by Chris Lockhart. The cook and young Master Martin were Alan Bergen and Julia C. Thorne of the Amelia Project from Imploding Fictions. And Biff was played by James Oliva, heard on countless shows and creator of What's the Frequency. Written and directed by Eli McElveen and Sean Howard. Music and sound design by Eli McElveen. Associate producers, Heather Collins, Julian Sark, Michael Hudson, Jack Peavy House, Paul Tedesco, and Kay Gokanda. Supporting producer, Kim Bellinger. Executive producer, Dave Addison. Quick, I was not looking. Oh, I don't know about this. Magnus! It's for science. If you enjoyed the show, check out our Patreon. Donors get weekly bonus content, early access to episodes, and an invite to our wonderful fan community on Discord. Look for the Patreon link at albasalix.com.